the Securities Commission is fining Lotte Chemical Titan, its executive directors and advisors a collective 2.19 million ringgit. This is after it dismissed their review applications over its decision to reprimand and penalise the parties, including reporting accountant Ernst and Young, for their failure to inform the SC of material developments prior to LCT's listing on Bursa Malaysia in 2017. It is also finding principal advisor Maybank Investment Bank for failing to carry out appropriate due diligence on LCT. To recap, LCT's management did not communicate the severity of an 11-day water disruption at its Johor-based plant during pre-IPO roadshows. It also failed to mention how much of an impact the total return equity swap in the first quarter of FY 2017 would have on the company's earnings. In less than a month of its listing, LCT lost as much as 4.7 billion ringgit in market capitalization as funds rushed to cut positions. For perspective, LCT only raised 3.77 billion in the IPO. Goldman Sachs is fighting back against criminal charges from the Malaysian government, saying it was lied to by deceptive Malaysian officials. According to CNBC, Goldman Sachs put the blame on certain members of the former government and 1MDB for deceiving the bank, outside counsel and others about how the proceeds from the deals were utilised. This is the first time that the bank itself faces criminal charges for 1MDB. Malaysian officials are demanding at least 3.3 billion USD from the New York-based bank. Goldman Sachs says that under the Malaysian legal process, the firm was not afforded an opportunity to be heard prior to the filing of these charges. Goldman Sachs intends to vigorously contest the case. The bank says that 1MDB, whose CEO and board reported directly to the PM at the time, had assured Goldman Sachs that no intermediaries had been involved during each of the transactions. Fugitive financier Lo Tech Jo blames the government for the erosion of the equanimity's value. Labelling it a failed PR stunt from the outset, Lo criticised Putrajaya for seizing the vessel from Indonesia, where he said the US government had been willing to cover the substantial cost of its upkeep. Instead, the yacht was left to dock in a hazardous environment at Port Klang, where it was also subject to poorly controlled media and public access. In a statement issued through his attorneys, he accused Putrajaya of prioritising illegal acts over the rule of law in order to score political points. He adds that with so much doubt hanging over its ownership, no sensible independent third-party buyer would buy the yacht at anything other than a hugely depressed value. Last week, 1MDB lawyer Sitpa Silvaratnam said that the equanimity would be sold for at least 130 million USD, almost half its original value of 250 million USD. Top Glove says it will be more careful on future merger and acquisitions, even as it continues to grow its market share. Executive Chairman Tan Sri Dr Lim Wee Chai says, ever since its Aspian purchase, its global market share currently stands at 26%. Top Glove plans to hit 30% in two years' time. Lim says that in the past it had acquired 13 companies, but adds that it will tread cautiously after getting burned during the Aspian acquisition. To recap, in July, Top Glove had discovered irregularities in Aspian's balance sheet related to its inventories, plant and machinery. These issues only came to light after the deal was concluded in April. These discoveries led to an ongoing lawsuit to claim 714.9 million ringgit against vendor Adventa Capital and its directors. Felda will implement 31 strategic initiatives under its transformation project, including a measure to address issues being faced by its settlers in terms of land inheritance and the transfer of titles. The plantation giant says about 30% of its 112,635 settler families are facing such issues, while another 58% will be facing similar issues soon. This is given the number of aging settlers. It says long-term solutions must be achieved to ensure a smooth transfer of ownership and welfare of the settlers' community as a whole. Other initiatives include a reorganization of the group, the identification of a long-term sustainability model and a more transparent loan management system. The 31 initiatives will be implemented over three phases, with each phase taking eight months each. 
The project will be monitored by its Transformation Council under the patronage of Felda Chairman Tan Sri Megat Zaharuddin Megat Mohammad Noor and led by Felda Director General Dato Abdul Ghani Muhammad Ali.